some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. He's coming after you and me. Joy is ours to share. Oh, what rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. And if more than you believe, yonder in the sky. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting on that happy morning, we all shall rise. Oh, what glory. clap of praise this morning. Lord, we love you. We worship you. God, we exalt you. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. As she was singing there about heaven, I thought about we're going to eat here in a little bit. How many of you like appetizers? Oh, appetizers are awesome. Just a little bit before the meal gets there. What we're just experiencing right now is an appetizer. Of what heaven is going to be like. How many of you want to experience the full meal? Hallelujah. Heaven is going to be worth the journey when we get there. One more time, just lift your hand, lift your heart, and let's praise Him this morning. Lord, we worship You. God, thank You for Your presence that we can feel. The touch of God in this place this morning. You're here to minister and to move, to feel every heart and every life. As only You can, in the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated this morning, the choir is getting ready to minister. Just get in. Let the Lord help you today. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all? 
too much to carry Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus And do you feel that empty feeling The shame's on all its healing And you're desperate for some healing Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus
You ought to throw both hands in the air and praise him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you made a way. Hallelujah. See, the problem is, is some are looking for an additive. They want to add Jesus. But it's not about adding him to your life. It's about letting him take control and making a complete transformation, a change. Let my Jesus change your life. Oh, glory, 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 glory. One more time, lift up your voice and praise him this morning. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. Delivered me from all my fears. Glory, 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 glory. We're so glad that you're with us this morning in the house of the Lord. Appreciate you being here. I'd like for a pastor friend of mine to come and greet you this morning. Brother Ben, come greet these folks this morning. Praise the Lord. Appreciate Brother Ben. And uh, uh, he's going to greet you this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. And it's so good to be with you today. Um, my uh, wife and I, we are in a bit of a transition. We are moving facilities. And I know you guys moved like 20 feet um, here when you built this. We're moving about a mile away. And, uh, and so we got occupancy in our new church facility this week. And uh, we were not able to kind of get it ready, so we recorded our service online this week. And so I said, I'm going to come see my good friend Randy and uh, worship with you. What an amazing opportunity to be here today. Man, I can feel the presence of God in here. And that's what changes lives. We talked about the changed lives. It's the presence and the power of God. And so uh, I want to encourage you in your faith today. Thank you for allowing me to come and uh, worship with you, and uh, I, it's always nice when you can come and not be in charge. And so I, I get the freedom to just be here and worship, and uh, thank you for allowing me to be here today. Pastor Ray, you've got an amazing pastor here. I, I know you know it, but, uh, and, and an amazing team. I know your team as well, and so God bless you. Thank you for uh, allowing me to be here and uh, it sounds like you've got a fun day ahead. Lunch, I might stick around for that. I didn't know that. I'm always good for a free lunch. So thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Children, get ready to be dismissed. Uh, and uh, our offering is going to uh, ushers if you come. We're going to worship the Lord today in our offering. So ushers, if you come. And when they get here, kids, you can be dismissed, okay? When they get in their places, don't run them over. But when they get here, you can be dismissed. I'll tell you what, when I, when I finish praying, you can be dismissed, all right? They're moving this way. It's wonderful to be a part of the family of God. Amen. Turn and tell the person next to you, I'm glad you're here. That we are glad that you're here and looking forward to what God is doing Thank you for being in the house of the Lord today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for the fact that you have blessed us. You've blessed us in so many ways that we can't even begin to number them all or name them all. But we just say thank you. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your grace. Thank you for the privilege we have to be in your house. Lord, I pray that you would bless each and every one that's here this morning, God. Lord, I pray that you bless this offering for the furtherance of your kingdom. In your name, amen. Uh, kids, you may be dismissed.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So glad that you're with us this morning in the house of the Lord. We got so Brother David. Brother David, come back. Brother David, I uh, want you to give us an update on your wife. We've been praying. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer here in just a moment. I want to continue to pray for Sister Tiffany and believe in the Lord to help us. Come here, sir. Hallelujah. Your name? Breon. And last Sunday, right there, yes, sir. the Lord did some great things for you. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. I know that because you look different this Sunday than you did last Sunday. Amen. Amen. Totally. Yes, sir. Totally. Y'all ain't going to help me in here. But when your burden's weighing heavy and it's all too much to carry, let me tell you about my Jesus. You know, you know, I just lost my dad a couple years ago. Uh-huh. And um, it's been hard because, like, me and my dad, we was close. Yes. And he was all I had. Uh-huh. Till I met them, Till I met them ladies up there. Yes. And... My life just, it, I mean, it was going down. I felt like I was in a dark hole that I couldn't get out of. Mm-hmm. And he kept me strong. Yes. He didn't, he didn't let me, like, it felt times where I feel like I couldn't do nothing with myself. And I still feel like, I still feel like I can't, but it, it's starting to, I'm starting to see the light now. Amen. Because like, the Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Father pulled you in. And he's going to continue to help you. Father, we thank you for what you've done in my brother. We thank you, Lord, that you're making a way where there seems to be no way. And I believe in you, Lord, to continue to minister and work for the glory of God. Wrap your arms around him. Lift him up. Make him a mighty man of God in this day and this hour. We'll give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Love you, son. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory, glory, glory. Well, you never know. We got to let him. We got to let him. I said we got to let him. He'll deal with us. He'll draw us. He'll convict us. But we've got to come to the point like the prodigal in Luke chapter 15 where he said, I will arise and go back to my father's house. Glory to God. You can stay in the hog pen or you can get up. Or you can get up. Somebody shouts, you don't have to lay there. You don't have to stay there, but you can be changed, transformed by the power of the gospel. Hallelujah. Brother David, give us an update on Sister Tiffany, and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Praise the Lord. Well, it's been almost a year now, and uh, my wife's still uh, battling and fighting, but she had to have a lot of hardware put in her legs after the accident, and uh, we're praying, believing this will be the last surgery, but they're going to remove all that hardware on Wednesday uh, because of the bone growth and everything looks good. So Lord will, on Wednesday morning, uh, they'll be taking um, all of the screws and, and rods and plates out of her right foot, and we covet your prayers, and we're thankful to God. God's not left us. Uh, he's uh, been been there the whole way, and uh, just every day, the Spirit of God renewed in us, so uh, please pray with us and for her uh, Wednesday morning as she goes. This is the sixth surgery on that same same foot, and uh, there'll be uh, extensive, uh, some repair to the, to the bone and um, scar tissues and all those things, so there's a lot, but we know God's in control. I uh, love and uh, depend on your prayers. Uh, God's brought us a long way, and uh, we're going to make it all the way. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 We want to pray for Chloe this morning, that the Lord would minister. 
grandpa's going to stand for. I want some of you grandpa. I want some of you grandfathers to step over there and agree with this grandfather and this grandmother. I want a couple of you sisters to step up, step up there and Sister Hannah, step over there and lay your hand on Tiffany's shoulder. Sister Terry, step over there and lay your hand on Sister Tiffany. We're gonna. If you need a touch from the Lord, I want you to stand right now. You need a touch from the Lord. We won't pray for Brother Bob this morning. Look at these that are standing that need a touch from the Lord. We want to believe the Lord this morning. I need a brother to step up beside every brother. Look around you. I need a sister to step over there and agree with every sister right now all over this place. Father, in the name of Jesus, you sent your word and you healed them. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. You told us in your word that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. I was once young and am now old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. You are near. You are close this morning, Lord. And we are believing you. We are calling upon you in the name of Jesus for the glory of God as a testimony of your faithfulness, your touch, and your healing power. Grant it, O oh God. Grant it, O oh God. Grant it, O oh God. Hallelujah. We believe you today, Lord. We believe you today, Lord. We believe you today, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Miracle worker, great God of heaven, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We thank you for the answer. We thank you for the answer. We thank you for the help. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God bless you as you're seated. We have some that are recovering and, and uh, been sick that are getting better and a few that are still under uh, the weather, but we're going to believe the Lord to continue to help them. Uh, Sister Amy, there's Sister Snow. Sister Snow, come up here. I know this is not... Uh, I better enjoy this anniversary now, praise God, because this may be the last one. Hallelujah. But uh, uh, one thing I will say, I, I, would, I just felt like I wanted to sing uh, The Sun's Coming Up in the Morning, okay? All right. Not because we've been married 37 years, uh, but uh, just I just better sing instead of... But. Um, My confidence is in the Lord. And um, I don't know what you're facing today. But God does. And He will help.
in a world filled with doubt and confusion. It's so hard when you don't understand. But I'm standing on a solid foundation. Stand with me, if you would, for the reading of the Word of God. So appreciate you being here in the house of the Lord today. Some began to text earlier in the week that was going on trip here, weekend, going there. I began to think, there ain't going to be anybody here. Folks began to text. Good to see, good to see Lucy back from Brazil. Praise God. Hallelujah. She brought her mother with her. Praise God. Psalms 33 and verse 20. Psalms 33 and verse 20. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 33 and 20. If you found it, say amen. amen. Psalm 33 and 20. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help. And our shield. For our hearts shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help. And our shield. For our hearts shall rejoice in him. Because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us. According as we hope in thee. I'd like to preach about having confidence. Having confidence. I got confidence. God is going to see me through. No matter what the case might be. I, I, 
I go to sing and somebody says, that reminds me of what he can't. Brother Ben and I was in uh, Israel years ago. And we got, was going through Hezekiah's tunnel and it got very dark. We started singing, the move is on, my Lord, the move is on. I got confidence. God is going to see me through. Sister Mary Miller's mother was about to cross over into glory. Sister Allen, Sister Pearl Allen. I slipped up beside her and I took her hand. And she looked up at me and gave me a warm smile. And I started singing. He's got it all in control. He's got it all in control. He put that reassurance way down in my soul. He's got it all in control. I'm confident. We are living in a society, in a world that is turned upside down. You better not put your trust and your hope in anything other than the Lord. Father, I pray today, once again, that you would open our ears to hear and our hearts to receive May men and women not be intimidated by fear and anxiety. May stress be put to flight this morning in the name of the Lord. For you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and a sound mind. Minister and move in this place. May the hope of glory touch every heart and every life in your name. And everybody said. Amen. God bless you this morning as you are seated. Turn to your neighbor. Thank you for being here. Our confidence is in the Lord. Our soul waiteth. In other words, our whole life is employed in this work. We trust in nothing but him. We don't trust in military might. We don't trust in our own natural strength. We don't trust in automobiles. Our trust is in the Lord who is our help and our shield. The reason you are here this morning is not because of your ingenuity or because of your work. And because of what? It's the grace and the mercies of God. There's better men and better women than you that are in a grave this morning. When I look back over the past few years, I had friends that are in eternity today. I had young men that I grew up with that had the same opportunity that I had and made decisions to lean on themselves to follow their own decisions, their own fleshly carnal ways. Some of them today are dead and in a devil's hell. I'm not the judge of that. But their fruits and their life exemplifies the direction of where. But I stand before you today, not because of what I am, but because of who he is. My help comes from the Lord. And the reason you're here today is because of the goodness and the grace of an almighty God. So why would we not continue to put our confidence in him?
It's not in the stock market. It's not in my job. I could lose my job tomorrow. You may vote me out tonight. I could die on the way home. There's accident. I live six miles from here. There's accidents almost weekly where I drive by and somebody... Mr. DeBerry is here this morning. He could tell us that they bury the young as well as the old. None of us is guaranteed tomorrow. So you better make sure that you have your confidence not in the arm of flesh, but in an almighty God. How could a man stand and testify that God began to turn things around in his life because he quit leaning on the arm of flesh and started looking to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who's the same yesterday, today, and forever? How could Brother David stand and testify and say it's God that kept us when part of the ankle, part of the leg was still left in the automobile? They said, she'll never walk. They'll do, she'll never do this. She'll never. And then the other day talking about amputation and all of that. But I'm telling you, there's a God in heaven who's made a way and I have confidence that what, how in the world could we stand and dedicate a baby that the, how could we look at Joshua and say, my goodness, oh, 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 all this, all that, oh, how bad it is. I have confidence in a God that has proven himself faithful. Somebody say he's faithful. Our hearts shall rejoice in him. Here is the fruit of our confidence. Our soul is always happy because we have taken God to be our portion. Now in just a few minutes when we finish, we're going to line up and go through these doors. There's some ladies back there now that are preparing and making sure things are warm and there's spoons in the dishes. And I'm not going to talk about it anymore. But as you go through there, you have, there's nobody, I'm just warning you right now, unless you're not able, now if you're not able, somebody, some part of your family, but even then they will ask you what you want. Now if I go down through there and Sister Snow is fixing me a plate in which she does periodically, she, I, I love you, God bless you if you made broccoli and cheese, but I'm not going to eat any of it. You can have it. I give you a double portion because you can have mine because I'm not a broccoli man. I like, I, the only thing I like green is green beans and they've got to be covered in brown sugar and wrapped in bacon. Come on now. Oh, Brother Snow, you need your veggies. You need, I, I don't like salad. I went. That's one reason why the other day when I was in the doctor's office and he told me I needed to lose weight, I said, I don't really like salad. Because I pull up and I'm asking for a burger. I want the bread. I don't want to be cheated. <laughs> Buy a burger and leave the bread in the back. I mean, put the bun on that thing, man. I want a big high. I like it, man. I, and you can tell I've not went without. But as it's our portion, you've got to partake of it. I'm just telling you now, I, you're going to go back through there and I'm not going to walk down through there and pick it up and put it on your plate. You've got to reach out and get a hold of it. And then when you get back there, you've got to pick it up with your own hand and stick it in your own mouth. I ain't got time to walk by here and feed all 400 of you. And I ain't going to because you are perfectly able. Now you hear me this morning. You don't have to be intimidated. You don't have to let fear. You don't have to let the enemy overtake you when there's a God in heaven that desires to be your portion. I ain't going to make it. You are. You're more than conquerors through him that loved you. 
Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us. We cannot abide in this state unless we are upheld by thee. And we seek continuance of his mercy. You know, it's a hard thing to do is wait. Don't look at me like that. I mean, that's why they made two lines at the Chick-fil-A now. That's why they got guys standing out there walking up and down in 103 degree weather because they don't want you to have to wait. You know why? Because if people have to wait very long, they take off. Oh, I have. Another night, we was driving off to Missouri, and I got hungry. I started to say hangry. I was, could feel I was getting, man, I was trying not to eat, but, and I saw the golden arches in the middle of Choklahoma. So I pulled through there. I realized I'd been sitting there 20 minutes. Sister Snow said, how hungry are you? I said, I'm hungry enough to wait. I waited 22 minutes to get through there by the time I got my food because there's one guy working at the cash register and evidently he was going and dumping the fries and somebody was over in the back. When I got up there, they said, sorry, there's only two of us tonight. I said, it's all right because I'm hungry. Now, patience, patience is not something that is in every bucket that we have. It's a hard thing. But what are we waiting on? We are waiting on the Lord. Every promise is mine. I can trust him. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. But what happens when things don't work out the way we think it ought to work out? What happens when things don't work out in the time frame? Now, I don't know how all this got together. All I know is it come together to me, and I'm supposed to share it to you. So what happens when things don't work out the way we like it, or in the time frame, we start doubting God. We become intimidated by the adversary. An intimidated person honors what he fears more than honoring God. I'm going to run that through again. An intimidated person honors what he fears more than honoring God. See, intimidation paralyzes us in the realm of the spirit. It causes us to compromise what we know to be right. It causes us to allow or tolerate what under any other circumstance we would not stand for. But when God doesn't work exactly the way we think it ought to be, let me give you an example of that. You ready? Eli. Eli was the 15th judge of Israel. He was the seventh high priest, and he judged Israel for 40 years. But he had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. They was vile. They was evil. And the Bible said he refused to, he, he talked to them, but he didn't restrain them because he was intimidated by his own children. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, yes, I did. If you are intimidated by your own children when they are doing wrong and you are afraid to stand up and tell them what they need to be doing is right, you are in trouble. But they won't like me. But if you stand up and tell them what's right, in a world where everybody's doing what they want to do, there'll come a day when they'll stand up and tell you they don't like you. They love you because you was man and woman enough to tell them the truth. But Eli was intimidated by his boys. 
Fear is a spirit. It is not from God. Hear me. Intimidation is a spirit. Intimidation. Here, here's, here's a good one. Elijah. Everybody knows Elijah. What courage Elijah had. Are you still with me? Say amen. I mean one man against a whole nation. 850 prophets. Get out there. Get you some. Build your altar. Call on God. The God that answers by fire, that's who we'll serve. 850. One man against almost a thousand. And, sorry, and the king. Praise a prayer. Fire falls from heaven. How many would like to pray a prayer like that? And what happens? Catch all the prophets. Catch them all. Slew them. But one woman. Y'all ain't going to shout with me now. One woman. Yeah, I heard somebody say something, Mary. Better leave that alone. One woman, Jezebel, she was the one that was controlling the nation. She was the one that was controlling the king. But that spirit of Jezebel and intimidation still lives in 2022. I know what the man of God said. I know what they said. But even though I have seen the evidence that the Lord is God, I'm still going to do what I want to do. Y'all ain't going to help me preach. And because of his intimidation, the man who's just called fire down from heaven runs off and he wants to die. Joram asked Jehu, Hey, brother, is it peace? And he said, as long as the witchcraft of your mother is going on, there's not going to be any peace. Help me now. Y'all ain't ready for this. A person exercises witchcraft when he or she seeks to control against the truth of the Word of God. Y'all... Galatians 3 and 1, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Elijah yielded to the intimidation and ran. When you let fear enter your heart, there are some things you're going to lose. You're going to lose your peace. You're going to lose your confidence. You're going to lose your courage. You're going to lose your resolution and your confidence that God is in control. Listen to me this morning. I've got confidence and I refuse to be intimidated by anything the devil wants to bring against me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Somebody told me. It's just, it's just positive thinking. Just, just the way you think. Just positive thinking. You know what? We had in our yard, we had in our yard, when I was a kid growing up, by the garden, a huge tree that produced apples. I love apples. There's nothing worse than eating apples before they're ready to be eaten. But you wait until they're ripe. Mom, canned apples, for those of you that don't know what that is, we took them, we peeled them, we cut them up, cur, ball, jars, y'all, y'all don't know. Boiled them, we boiled them on the stove, and then we put, put them down in there, put them ep- apples down in there, and oh, man. <laughs> in the winter, when things was cold, you'd open up a jar of that. Pop, pop that thing off there and see, unseal that. And, and we picked every apple. Every apple that was bad, I took it down where I deer hunted and threw them out. And the deer came through there to eat them. 
And you know what? We got every apple off that tree, every apple. But you know what? Next year, you know what it did? It produced more apples. Some of you are dealing with the symptom. Some of you are dealing with... Would you just picking up the apples when what you need to do is get out the spiritual chainsaw and cut it away at the root? Some of you are dealing with things that the enemy continually is bombarding you with and you're cleaning up the apples, but you're still dealing with the root of the situation. Listen, I refuse to be intimidated by the lies of the enemy that I am not who he says I am, that I cannot make it. I shall overcome. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I have confidence, and with that confidence comes Boldness. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. But Brother Snow, I'm in the middle of a dilemma. But see, my destiny is greater than my dilemma. No fear. Somebody say no fear. I'm confident that God is going to see me through. Nothing intimidates more than ignorance. Ignorance is a lack of knowledge. Proverbs 24 and 15, a wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increases the strength. Proverbs 11, 9, a hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. How did I get off on this? A hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge the just shall be delivered. I must know the truth and stand in the confidence of the truth. Hear me. And when I know the truth, I must obey the truth. If you are doing things that brings conviction to your heart and you continue to walk after that, you are turning away from the truth. Oh, I I was really enjoying this service up until now. Listen, young people, God did some great things in your heart and life at camp, but I must continue to walk in truth because then when I walk in truth, I have confidence that I'm doing and following the Word of God, the will of God, and I can have confidence that God is going to help me. But when I turn away from the truth, when I walk in my own way, When I walk in what I want to do rather than what the Word of God tells me to do, I'm an open target for the enemy. Fear moves in. Condemnation moves in. I must walk in His ways. I must abstain from sin, hating even the garment that is spotted by the flesh. I must live holy in a compromising world and a compromising church world. We want to sing about the sweet by and by, but won't do, don't do not talk to me about the nasty now and now. You hear me this morning. If we're going to stand in confidence, I'm telling you right now in this world we're living in, friend, there's things that are going to continue to come and pressures that are going to continue to mount against the church and you're going to have to have a boldness and a confidence that the truth of the Word of God is what it is and you're going to stand on the truth. More theories. More ideas. Y'all ain't going to help me preach, but I'm going to go ahead and tell it to you. You better know the truth. You know, at 9.30 on Sunday morning, we have Sunday school. Do you know we have teachers that study all week and prepare to bring you the Word of God? I already already know everything. You know what? A few days I'll be 58 and I'm finding just how ignorant I am. 
this year, I told the staff this morning in the meeting this year, God has given me a greater love this year in reading his word than ever before. If you're not reading the word of God, how are you going to have confidence? (laughs) When you're following your own way and what? Phil, Dr. Phil, Dr. Oprah, oh, just follow your heart. Just stand up there and just follow your heart. Don't you dare follow your heart. Your heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Well, I, this is what I feel. It's not about what you feel, sir. I'm sorry to tell you. It's not about what I feel. It's about what the truth of the Word of God has to say about it. And I don't want to walk in anything in a day and an age when the coming of the Lord is upon us and the church world is growing cold. I got to stand having confidence that it's well with my soul, that I'm following after the Word of God and living in the truth. Living in the truth. I'm confident. I'm confident. Wednesday night and Thursday night, we was in a meeting for Africa's Hope. I was talking to a couple of missionaries from Africa. The reason why I serve, the reason why I got involved in that was because of my friend Robert Holmes. I love going to Africa. I love the people of Africa, but I will just tell you right now, the African Assemblies of God Church has far surpassed us. They have. Because we have become modernized. They give rules and regulations for us when we come over because they'll tell you the Assemblies of God in the United States is different. I got over there. I'm just going to go ahead and talk to you. I got over there, and I was preaching in a meeting. We began to preach. I began to pray for folks. And all of a sudden, the general superintendent, Barnabas Mukdambali, come down and said, Brother Rande, you're assembly of God? I said, yes. He said, praise God. He said, this is what our preachers used to do. He said, now the last couple of guys I've had come over, they want to sit down and they want to talk to me and tell us, you know, give us steps. of." And he said, it was okay teaching, but I want somebody that will stand and preach under the anointing that breaks the yoke. that will call people to the altar and have them to pray. Y'all ain't hearing me. I'm telling you, I'm not, not that I'm anything, but I'm telling you this morning that if we are not careful, we will have a form, but we will lose the confidence. Listen, when he said they're going to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, I believe there's a God in heaven that still not only saves, but he heals, he delivers, he sets people free. And for that to be the case, I can't just do it on Monday. I can't just preach it on Sunday. Hear me. While the church world is being rocked to sleep, getting further and further from the truth, all through the Old Testament, the Bible talked about a mixed multitude. Come on, church. If we're going to have confidence... We must be holy as he is holy. We must stand on the promises of the word of God in faith, not in fear, not intimidation. Hallelujah. When did God change his mind? When did God turn things around? He never has. He's still looking for a people that will separate themselves unto him. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray 
pray and seek my face and for turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven. I forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. And I have confidence that God desires to bring a revival. But you and I must be what we are supposed to be. Why? Because there's a generation that's coming on. There's a generation that's coming on. <laughs> Brother Matt Jones called me. He said, man, the people are still talking about the camp and the revival. He said, some of them talking about you out there playing volleyball. You know why I get out there and play volleyball with them and spike on somebody's head? Because I just don't want them to hear me tell the story. I want them to experience it. You know why, Brother David, I still get out there and play basketball with them? You know why I get out there and play softball with them? I still throw one or two real hard then walk around the rest of the day with my arm hanging down like this. You know why I do that? Because I don't want to just tell them about it. I want them to see it. Hey, man, that guy knows what he's talking about. But I'm sick and tired of a church world that's talking about doing one thing and living another way. Friend, it's time that we have confidence that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. And we live a life that will bring glory and honor to him. Jocelyn, there's a generation that's following. I'm just sorry, friend. I'm sorry. But I was born in the fire. Church I grew up in was on fire. And I refused to live in the smoke. I said, I refuse to live in the smoke. We must have the fire of God burning on us. Hallelujah. There's a generation, what we declare is essential matters. That's why I'm careful what I do, what I say. I can tell Justin that Justin don't do that and then me go down there and do it. He's going to listen to what I say, but he, more importantly, you know why Justin's here today? I'll tell you why he's here. Because he's seen me. He's seen me on the softball field. Could you imagine if they'd have called me out and I was saved by a step and a half and I turned around and cussed the referee out and got kicked out of the game and then turned around and looked at Jess and said, Jess, won't you come to church with me? <laughs> yeah, I believe I'll go on over and get me some. No, he ain't going to follow that. He's looking for somebody. Listen, there's a world outside, friend, that's looking for somebody to put their confidence in, that don't just say one thing, but they live their life in a way that brings glory to God. And when I'm doing, and when I'm praying, and when I'm seeking God, and I'm being what I'm called to be, listen, I can walk down through the aisle at Walmart. I can lay hands on the sick. I can have individuals turn and say, there goes a man of God not knowing who they are y'all don't want to help me preach what I declare is essential matters right now in a day and an age when everybody has a voice listen I'm confident that your family is worth fighting for I believe in this generation I believe in the next generation and the generation that's coming on he is my hope. He is in control. But I must be faithful to him. Musicians, come and help me. You still working at the state school, sister? Hallelujah. Do they just... Do they just give you checks every week without you showing up? No. You got to show up. You got to put the work in. 
And then you got to make sure. Help me. What makes us think that God has an obligation to hear our prayer when we're praying for our sick children? What makes us think that God has an obligation to help me in my finances when I've not been faithful in what He's given me? When I've not been walking the way I ought to walk, I've been resisting the Spirit of God. There'll come a time. There'll come a moment when you're going to realize I need the Lord to intervene right here. And if I've been intimidated by fear, if I've been intimidated by my children, if I've been intimidated by not being willing to stand for the truth, my father used to tell me, I don't care, son, who you are. I'm paying for these groceries you're eating right here. Right here. You take your big finger and you point it. Green plate. Mom had green plate. Just right here. Right here. I'm paying for that. And as long as you pull your long legs up under this table, you will obey me. You will obey the rules of this house. You'll go to church. I know this is going to surprise you. When I got about 16, I had a little rebellious streak. I got my car. You know what he did? He took my car keys and hung them by the phone. Took my car away from me. I had to go over and pick up that phone that had a 100-foot extension cord. I could go all the way down the hall. You come running through there, it'd catch you right in the neck. All the way down to my bedroom, close the door call one of my friends, can you come pick me up going to work tie some chicken what's wrong, your car broke down, well kinda I'll tell you about it later matter of fact I'll give you some gas money if you come the next two weeks and pick me up you know what, I didn't like that that was, that was embarrassing but if I was going to get married today you know who my best man would be, it'd be Don Snow because I realized that he was laying down. He was not going to compromise. He was going to stand knowing that there was rules. There was things I needed to follow. You hear me? Do not be intimidated. Do not be intimidated to stand for the truth of the Word of God. And if you come, let me just go ahead and tell you while I'm here. If you come to try to intimidate this preacher, you've come too late. I want you to come, but I want you to do right. I want you to be right. Because when you stand before God you're going to turn around and look back and say thank you for helping me to make it by the help and the grace of God because I have confidence that God is coming and he's going to see me through and when I do what I'm supposed to do I can pray in confidence I can go to him in confidence that he's my hope my help my strength and you need the Lord to help you today Stand with me all over this house. The devil's been lying to you and telling you that God's not in control. I come to tell you he is. The devil has told you that God's not faithful. He's forgotten you. And I come to tell you that God has never forgotten you. He's always on time. Somebody under the sound of my voice today. I don't know, maybe you're watching online. Maybe it's a Monday in your life. I want to give a shout out to my friend Lauren. I saw her Friday. I stopped by Steve Holden's paint store in Colorado Springs and walked in and surprised him. 
He thought I was a businessman coming there trying to sell him something. He jumped up from behind the table and run around there and old high school friend, what are you doing here? She stepped next door and I stepped next door. And there was Brother Gary and Sister Mary's daughter. She said, I watch every Monday, watch your service. Lauren, be confident. There's things we prayed for we've never seen come to pass. But I'm confident that God's in control. I said, I'm confident that God, some of you prayed for healing and you haven't seen it yet. But I said, God is in control. Some of you prayed, hallelujah. And the enemies come to steal your joy and your peace. You're thinking it's never going to happen. You need to, you need to, you need to come this morning right now. Come on, step out. Slide to you, but I need the Lord to help me this morning. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. God's going to make it better. I said, God's going to make it better than it ever was. I said, God can do. <laughs> Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. <laughs> the devil's a liar. <laughs> destiny is greater than my dilemma. I'm confident I need every brother that will to come and help me pray. I need every sister, every man, woman, boy, and girl in this house. Come on. Come on. These altars are open. Come on. Come find your place of prayer. I'm believing that God is going to bring you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now when you get here, lift up your hands. Believe him. Believe him, Lord. I believe you. I believe you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. I trust you. I trust you, Lord. My life is in your hands. I trust you. Whatever you need him to do this morning. Jesus, I, I can't take it. Him I know Hallelujah. I can save. If you need him to save you, ask no matter him. What He's not willing that any should perish. My life is in you need your him hands. To you just ask Jesus to help They don't last always. There's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears on, away. Right. If your heart is broken, I will follow you. Lift your hands and say. Your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can 
You don't have to worry. Don't you be afraid. Friend, joy comes in the morning. Troubles, they won't last always. There's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, oh. Somebody, somebody in this altar, the devil is telling you it's not going to do any good. You're not going to make it. God's not going to hear you. He's not turning. I, I, I felt it so strong in my spirit. The devil is a liar and a defeated foe. Only thing he knows to do is lie to you. There's a God in heaven that's for you right now. I want you to lift both hands toward heaven right now. Everybody in this altar, lift both hands toward heaven. Lift them, lift them, lift them. I believe you, Lord. I believe what you said in your word. I have confidence that your word is true. I know I can oh, make it. I know. 